Hi, my name is Sam. I'm on a mission to build the world's most sustainable locomotive using the power of steam. You want stuff? I certainly would like some stuff. Ooh, some things. Are these things you would use? I could find a use for them, I suppose. I have no idea what they're for. And here's a sample, because I wanted to ask you whether we've got it right before we print do the rest. Because right. Um, that looks uh, that looks pretty good from here. I was a little concerned about. I clean the edge up, mm -hmm. but the way we cut at this is we do a dynamic hole here, and it just nicks the edges. I could start way out and move in, mm -hmm. but whether it's worth all that, I don't know. So again, with these, it's just where we've I've left it out rather than in. Mm -hmm. So assuming you'd be cleaning up. Is it possible, do you think, to prevent this from happening in the future? It is. Mm. Uh, you've got to go about half the speed again. Mm -hmm. What's happening is the water's going in, yep. and then it turns, and then as it races away, the jet can't cut away at the bottom as fast as the top, and the jet starts doing that, and it washes back, and that's yes. what it's done, it's washed back. I have the rest of the profiles for the circulating pump for the boiler. I'm going to be spending a bit of time on this pump over the coming weeks. I've got in my head that I can finish it in a month. Now, if the past is anything to go by, I always underestimate how long it's going to take me to do something. It's not very often that I get something finished on time. I'd like to have it finished in a month. We'll see how I go. Uh, but it is Christmas and the new year, so there's a few distractions. Alan, the uh, water jet man, popped around and dropped these off last night, which was great. Thank you, Alan. So this is the flange for the top head of the pump, and on it you can see the port pattern. So these, uh, this is the exhaust port, this is the steam inlet port, and this is the communication port with the bottom of the cylinder. This here is one of the covers for the bottom end of the pump, for the water end of the pump. So these are a bit larger, and one of these covers is used to make the centre section of the pump. So last time I got the stuffing boxes made and some of the nuts, and I need to make the mild steel nut for the bottom end of the pump, which has the tail rod on it. Uh, but I can do that any time, so I'd like to get the structure of the pump, the cylinders all welded up and assembled so I can send them off, get them stress relieved in the furnace, get them back, and then it's just down to me machining them. And while they're away being stress relieved, I can finish off some of these parts. Now this is the drawing for the centre section of the pump, and it's comprised of a piece of three and a half inch steel pipe and two of the covers for the pump. But what I need to do is, is to make sure that when I weld the, the three and a half inch pipe between the steam side cover and the water end cover, I have the two covers lined up perfectly concentrically. I've only allowed a millimetre to machine off each of the profiles, so the tolerances are quite tight and I've got to get it welded up pretty well spot on as a result. So I'm going to make a simple jig onto which this whole assembly before it's welded can sit and I can tack it all together and it will hold the whole lot in perfect alignment. And that's the plan. The jig's going to be nice and simple. I'm going to take this piece of steel plate, I'm going to bore a hole in the middle of it, I'm going to take a piece of one and a half inch steel pipe, fit it into the hole, weld it from the underside, like so, and put it back in the lathe, face this, and turn this down to a close fit in the holes in the middle of the two covers which are designed to take the stuffing boxes once they're machined out to size. So when I place the bottom cover, or the water end cover, and then the piece of three and a half inch pipe, like so, then the steam end cover, they'll all be held in perfect alignment by this one and a half inch pipe. Now I can get in here and weld, weld, weld.
here's all of the flanges and cylinder covers for one pump. What I have to do is clean off with the angle grinder these little tabs and nicks that the water jet's left behind. And that'll make it a bit easier to put in the lathe. Once it's in the lathe, I need to bore out the uh, internal diameter of the two steam end flanges. And I need to take a light skim off the bore on the cover, which is going to be a part of the centerpiece. And likewise for the steam cover, which is also going to be a part of that centerpiece. This groove that I've just finished machining on the face of the steam end cover is basically to give a clean zone on which to weld the three and a half inch pipe to. And what it also does is define the dimensions of the weld. So when I, when I put the fillet weld in there, I need to weld to the edge of that groove. That'll help achieve a nice consistent weld all the way around. This is the bottom flange which is attached to the cylinder uh, on the steam end of the pump and I'm machining the bore of this out because on the steam end the flanges actually fit around the steel pipe uh, whereas on the water end they are basically butt welded on onto the ends of the pipe. I need to machine this out so that, that it just fits around the pipe and then I'll also machine in the weld prep so that we have a sunken flush weld on the end faces, which will then be machined off when the cylinder is finished machined. Almost. Will it fit? Now, please come out. Hmm, I might have seen this coming. There we are. the end of that. Now I've got to bore out the top flange on the pump which has the ports cut in it to communicate with the exhaust outlet and the steam inlet and the communication passage. So I've got to dial this up as true as I can here and then I've just got to bore about a millimetre off this so it'll fit like the other flange uh, just snugly on the cylinder. Then machine the weld prep and we'll be good to go. Will it fit? It's close. Yes, it will. I've got the flange for the top head in the lathe, and I'm trying to true it up so it runs true uh, before I bore out this. So what I need to do is bore this out to accept the steam chest, basically, and then that'll be welded into place and the whole machined. Uh, but the problem is the bore, as it's been cut, has between uh, these two marks got something funny going on, so it's proving quite difficult to, to get it trued up. The important thing is that I've got this bore concentric with these ports so that they will line up with the ports in the cylinder. I'm just using the boring bar. I've set up the edge so it's just, it's really close to the, to the face of the flange, and the cutting point is lined up with the inside edge of that port, of each port. And I'm just bringing it round and looking and feeling to see uh, if they're all lined up as they should be. The last flange I have to turn before I can start welding the pump together 
is the bottom end of the centerpiece. So this is the water end cover. And like the other end, I need to bore this out and machine a groove here uh, for the three and a half inch pipe to weld into. But the design of the new locomotive, it's all about learning as much as I can about existing technology and existing techniques. So this afternoon I've taken an opportunity to come along to Mainline Steam's depot in Christchurch and give Grant and Mike a hand reassembling the drag box on KB968, one of the, the most powerful steam locomotives that uh, the New Zealand Railways operated. Where the Midland Rail Heritage Trust is building its current facilities is where those KB class locos were originally stabled uh, refueled, maintained, so there's a nice connection there. Is that all the way in? Sort of catching on this. Yep. Okay. Whoa! Hey, you don't want to put your hand at the back there. No. Didn't do that the first time. Pretty good applying, I wonder. Lots. Mike, can you tell me what have you been doing today on, on this locomotive? Today we've been refitting the drag box of this particular loco. Uh, it had been damaged in a previous uh, NZR incident. So it's been it's been welded up repaired and it's all back in. Correct. And I came in here today to have a look at how you were bolting it in, so we're using huck bolts. Yes indeed. How do huck bolts work? We need a sleeve. <laughs> <laughs> there's a sleeve there attached, so here's a completed example. I'll get you a sleeve. Can you get me a sleeve? Pause. So we have a huck bolt, which has got grooves on it rather than threads. Mm -hmm. We have a sleeve which slides over the, the huck. The tool comes along and pushes the sleeve tight while gripping that part of the shank. It gets to a point where the sleeve can't move any further forward. So the sleeve is actually compressed onto these rings here. And this neck is where it breaks when you, when you pull it up tight. Correct. This is KB968. This loco is the only surviving example of the K-Class locomotive. So we're lucky enough to have the lease on it from uh, Ferry Mead uh, Trusts to uh, restore this loco. So yeah, in terms of New Zealand history, it's very significant. And it's, uh, it's a pretty special loco for the people of uh, Canterbury because uh, it was saved by the, the children of Canterbury way back in the, um, in the late 60s. So. And it's going to run again. It's going to run again. It's a lot of work to do, but it will run again. So, so this is the drag box that uh, was installed today. But you can see what Mike was referring to when he said this has been repaired. Uh, some beautiful welds in here, but this has all been reconstructed out of plate. So thank you, Grant and Mike, for letting me come along and give you a hand and, and learn a lot. It all helps me design the new locomotive.
I've made the one and a half inch pipe a light drive fit in the base which will make it a lot easier to weld just hold itself in position so and I've just lightly sandpapered this in the lathe so that it just starts to enter and then I'll finish it off with the press just got a little bit more to go I've left it short and now I've got a nice little corner to uh, put a fillet in which will hold the whole thing together. There we are. So I'll let this cool down and then I'll pop it in the lathe, dial it up here and on this face and then I will turn this down to 45 and a quarter millimeters and I'll reface that to make sure it's absolutely true. Think of it like a cylindrical square. To compensate for the uh, misalignment of the spindle to the lathe bed, I'm going to adjust the tool as it cuts along the length. And I've measured this and I've marked the positions at which I need to advance the tool into the cut by 0.01 of a millimetre. And that should give me a consistent diameter across the whole length. I can polish out any, uh, any remaining inaccuracies. Because the hole pattern is already cut in the top and bottom flange for the centerpiece, I need some way to align those hole patterns. So what I'm doing is using the point of the cutting tool to scribe a line down the length of this tube and that will allow me to scribe lines on each flange and then as I assemble this on here, ready for tacking and then welding together, I can line those uh, scribed lines up with this reference line along the length of the, of the tube. There we are. Of course I can't resist giving it a bit of a dry run. I haven't scribed the marks on the flanges yet, so I don't know what the alignment is, but I just want to I just want to see how it all works. So that goes on there. Lovely. Then our three and a half inch pipe fits in there. And then this goes on top. You can see the reference line poking through the top. On these flanges I need to mark out a line which will correspond with that and that'll tell me that it's all perfectly lined up. I've had an idea. One of the most annoying things to do is grind weld prep on all of the little parts that I've got to weld together to make up the circulating pump. So on circular parts it's fine because I can machine it, but for all of the flat and straight edges I'm not inclined to set up the mill to mill them because it can be quite slow and it means adjusting the head on the mill which takes quite a lot of time to realign. So I've had an idea, I've got a shaper here uh, and I've never really, well I haven't used it to date actually, I'd really like to use it and I've just had an idea that maybe I can use this to machine the weld prep on the flat surfaces. It would certainly be a lot nicer and more accurate than grinding them. As I say, it hasn't been used for a long time, I've forgotten how to use it so I'm going through a process of rediscovering uh, how it all works. 
and almost wrecking it at the same time. This shaper did come from Hillside Workshops in New Zealand and Hillside Workshops were Dunedin based at the southern end of New Zealand and the last steam locomotives that were built in New Zealand were built at Hillside Shops so maybe this has already built a steam locomotive. So I've got the access cover off. I'm just looking for all of the lubrication points which don't look like they've been used for some time. I'm afraid I don't know what the jargon for a shaper is but that's uh, the pivot, bottom end pivot of the, the arm which drives the head of the shaper. Uh, that is the main crank pin if you like and it's quite a nifty system for adjusting the stroke it is a variable stroke system so there is a set of bevel gears and from the other side I can rotate those bevel gears which turns a lead screw and adjusts the throw of the crank pin we have several different speeds available in this uh, gearbox at the rear and there's a few teeth missing on the main gear wheel I'm fairly certain it's going backwards, so we're going to have to adjust the wiring on the electric motor. The stroke of the ram can be adjusted by slacking off this lock nut, and then rotating this, which rotates a bevel gear and that lead screw. So the maximum stroke is 18 inches. I have found that if you uh, wind it beyond 18 inches, it will crash the machine. So let's not uh, do that. So if I set the stroke for ooh, eight inches is nice. Off and close. Ooh, what have I done? The gears sound a bit sweeter now too. That's better. Slow to cut, faster track. Yep, much sweeter. Okay, moment of truth. We've got the shape all set up, all lubricated, cleaned, all ready to go. So let's see uh, what happens. Okay, I've set the indicator up over the back here so I can measure in millimetres how far over I'm traversing it. The shaper's working really well, and the important point about using the shaper, or actually machining the uh, weld prep, is this edge is perfect, and there's only one millimeter allowed for the edge of the vertical member, which is welded onto this, to sit on this face. And it's really important that it does sit on this face, not somewhere on this weld prep, because the design relies on that, to ensure that the whole assembly is welded together accurately. This might involve a little bit of extra time, but it does save a lot of noise, a lot of dust, and grinding discs aren't cheap. What I've ended up doing is using a high-speed steel cutter instead of the carbide insert cutter that I was using before. I did realise that I was using the other tool uh, the wrong way round. I should have been cutting from this direction across rather than the other way. So I started operating that using that in the other direction, that worked much better, but the carbide tools tend to take quite a lot of force to cut, and high speed steel, a nice sharp ground high speed steel tool, can result in a lot less cutting force. Last steam test of the year. Hey, Nico. The last one.
Oh dear, the last cup of tea for 2020. Well, a cup of real tea. Well, that's it till next time. I'm uploading this on Christmas Day, so Merry Christmas. It's the last episode of 2020. Thank you for joining me this year. I'm looking forward to next year. I think 2021 is going to be an important year for the project. Thanks for watching this episode, and a huge thank you to everyone who is supporting the project, whether that's by becoming a patron, donating directly to the project, or just lending a helping hand. Thank you, I really appreciate your support please hit the subscribe button and check out my page on Patreon. I'd love you to join the project as a patron to help me on my mission to build the world's most sustainable locomotive using the power of steam.